episode of Multiplayer. I'm your host, Guillermo Dorado, back at it again. Did you guys miss me last week? We missed you so much. I appreciate that. You know, I, I miss uh, you guys. Yeah, I, I, I decided, I, I don't know what I'm doing as the host. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, thought you did, I thought you did really well, man. I think I did all right. You made me proud. I was like, oh, shit, maybe they don't need me. Well, I can I just like... <laughs> well, no, uh, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't be here last week, but uh, you guys seemed like you held on the torch just as well. Barely, and we're going to yeah. be talking about some stuff that you guys brought up last week a little bit, too, because there's some relevant shit. But before we do that... What are you guys' names? <laughs> Hi, yeah. I'm Zach Matskanis. What up? <laughs> are we introducing ourselves then? Yeah, fuck All right, whatever, go away. You did such a good job last week. <laughs> uh, my name's Hav, and I'm the second Can guy. Can you say it correctly? It's Javier Ortiz. That's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so welcome everybody to, uh, to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate seeing your faces and, uh, and, and, and you know, barring your ears for a little bit because we have this in two different places. That's right. You can watch this on YouTube at our YouTube channel, multiplayer or youtube.com slash multiplayer, or you can listen to this via podcast. There are uh, podcast services such as Google Play, iTunes, and yeah, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> we're, we're working on getting that all worked out. I think out. so. I think it's going to take off. But yeah, like, thank you guys so much for joining us on whatever medium that you're on right now. And hey, remember that you can also enjoy this on the opposite medium, whatever you're doing. Take us on the go in the shower with your dog, with your family. Whatever it is. We also have a Patreon page as well that you can go and check out and you can actually donate money to if you would love to do so. It would help us make this show bigger and better. And just by doing that, by getting just a dollar a month, you get two extra videos that we do every other Friday. But don't worry if you don't want to donate because we actually release those a week later to the masses on our YouTube channel as well so that no one gets excluded. But patrons get... Uh, get uh, Exclusive rights for a week, so there you go. Those you get, are cool you get, videos. You get Always. bragging rights, you know? That's what that is. Yeah, I like our bonus videos. I do too. I love bonus rounds. Yeah. It's like we, get, we go down the nitty gritty, like really uh, talk the, some things out, you know? Nitty gritty. The nitty gritty, gritty. Nitty, nitty gritty down in the city. <laughs> <laughs> we just rhyme a lot. <laughs> so um, a, okay, a yeah, thing. so so we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, um, a lot of numbers, actually, this week. Yeah. A lot of things are happening. A lot of a lot of backlash from a certain company that will kind of glaze over because we've been talking the hell out of it. But you know what? Yeah. It's we, relevant. We talked about it a lot last week. Yeah, I noticed and that. And some October numbers. That's true. I'm a little upset I wasn't on that episode because <laughs> I wanted to talk about the Mario movie. But so good. that's all right. We, have, we all have our, our, yeah. uh, you our can opinions. You can just say, are you happy about it? You... I mean, you know, here's the thing. Just Real quickly. Much. <laughs> no, I, I am so I'm for it. I'm super for it. Yeah. Uh, like, as long as Nintendo sticks with their, as long as we keep creative control, yeah. we'll make the movie. And if that is true, I'm glad. But now I'm super excited about Illumination Studios being behind it, because I'm not a big fan of their minions. I don't want that. Yeah. Get that shit away from my Mario. <laughs> you know, like. But like, if you have to choose like a, a 3D <laughs> animated, like studio, Pixar. They, true. Well, Pixar, yeah, Pixar would, would be. But the thing yeah. is, Disney would take control. They wouldn't, Nintendo Ooh, wouldn't be in control. Fair point. So, I mean, you fair go point. with Illumination where it's like, okay, yeah, well, because essentially the minions, if you saw a minion in a Mario game, it would look fine. It, it, well, like, I mean, it, the rabbits look, are pretty much yeah. minions Right, they Europe, look like so. they belong in the same world, like the same art style, like yeah. they fit in that 3D world. So, I mean, if you had to pick a place, it's, I think it's fine. Plus, Nintendo's yeah. like, we're going to do this. You guys are just drawing. Yeah, yeah. I think as, yeah. as as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, I'm for this. I'm mm -hmm. super, super, super for it. Because, I mean, they obviously understand their property more than anybody else, and they're not going to yeah. destroy it. Like, Plus, they already have a good did. relationship the, with Universal. What's, what's Schumacher. Schumacher, yeah. yeah. Schumacher. The director, Joel Schumacher of uh, Super Mario Brothers. No, he, he didn't he did do that. No, no, no. It was a, it was a, it was a husband and wife yeah, yeah, tag it was, team. Yeah, yeah I can't remember who it was, but I... I well, he apologized for different reasons. Batman Forever, we all know the conspiracy. Hey, Batman Forever was awesome. <laughs> Plus, it led to Take a bunch of conspiracy back. theories. <laughs> well, that's true. Anyways, yeah. okay. So, that, that, I just want to, like, touch on that real quick. Um, I am a fan. I hope that comes out. We'll see what happens, though. And, yes, we should make a company trip on that, because I'm down for that idea. Um, moving on, though. This week, I wanted to talk about a uh, little little ditty that we saw over in UK diddy. happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> little Diddy Kong? Little Diddy Kong. Little Diddy Kong. Um, <laughs> up. Apparently... So, you know, this games as a service thing has been a, has been a topic for quite some time, right? And, uh, and I think people are starting to forget the joy of just playing the actual game itself. Yeah. 
And yeah, no. is, are you are you with us? Is that uh, yes, am I boring you? Yeah. Jesus, I, I, I realized I wasn't here last week, but I, goddamn, I, I put my phone <laughs> on do not phone. disturb. Gaffy, unless he's the side of his face. I don't yeah, want yeah. that, I don't want like, that buzzing on. the whole show, you know. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, yeah, but so like every, but people, I think I, I feel like are starting to lose the fun of playing a game instead of having trying to achieve these goals or get like the newest skin or a certain rank, mm -hmm. and they're going as far as to hire people. To play for them. Yeah, it's a little this. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So in UK, there is now a, a company that has opened up called Bidvine, where they actually allow people to hire a professional player. Of you can either pay it's fifteen pounds, but it comes out to twenty dollars US, mm -hmm. uh, and you can hire them to fucking play COD for you, like <laughs> Call of Duty World War Two, so that you can get to the, the prestige the quickest. Like yeah. what the so fuck is that about? It's, it's, it's like taking. Play to win to like an absolute yeah, the next level. New you know, level. just just pay. Just, That's it. Yeah. <laughs> just, there's no playing anymore. Yeah, you're, you're not just, playing the game. Yeah. Might as well just so go watch weird. a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and just be like, oh yeah, I'm John Wick. I just beat <laughs> it's up all so those dudes. Weird. <laughs> it makes no sense. It, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, like I understand to a to a very um, fine degree that that is a business model. I think actually will work. You know, apparently um, we were talking to to Nathan Nath. If anyone was curious, um, <laughs> Nath Redfield. Nath Redfield. Before Woo! the show started, he actually was saying that. Um, he's also heard of Overwatch doing that. That people were—it wasn't a company, but people were actually like finding really good players and paying them to play for them, and even uh, asking female players to play on their team. It was kind of like as a twofer, like, "Hey, we'll get you your comp <laughs> better. You know, your team composition will be way better, and you have a better player. But also, there's a lady in the group, and oh now you get God. to talk and have some." You know, you can talk to a girl. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's just it's weird. It's weird that it already existed, but it makes sense in the community that is so uh, multiplayer driven and so on live. The community is thriving and that whatnot. I get that. That makes sense. But to have a company open up and their whole business <laughs> oh, yeah. model is, hey, we have players for hire. We're gonna get you that fucking golden that, shotgun. Like, like what yeah. does that even mean? It's, it's just like the epitome of laziness. Yeah. Like just the worst <laughs> piece of shit. Like you're you're not even playing anymore. You're just like. All right, I'm gonna give you like a hundred bucks. Just get me to the highest rank I can get with all the shit. Right. And then you just like, what, what are you doing? You're like, you're yeah, just not I, do. You're like, what are you, are you even doing? doing? You're not, <laughs> I don't understand the logic behind this. And well, the logic makes sense, no, but it it's, well, it's antithetical to a game. That's that's why the yeah. logic doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah. Because you're buying a game not to play it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's kind of dumb. yeah. Well, the, the thing is that there's such a pressure now that even the uh, the co-founder of the company was saying like the pressure for people trying to get to that first prestige the quickest or to like rank up and like get certain weapons and abilities is is there. There's a lot of pressure on like gamers and you know especially when you have twelve year olds like yeah, calling your mom a slut. The game. It's like there's no pressure. It's a video I game. I agree. I agree completely with that. Unless like, you're playing like in a competitive like like if you know if you're on like a league. Yeah, there, there's some. You should still be playing because you should be, you should yeah. be good. Like, yeah. that's, exactly. That's, you're, you're probably the one charging for that. But right. it's like God. outside of that, it's like there's no pressure. Like I play a lot of Overwatch, but there's no pressure for me to like go and play. Right. It's just like I'm gonna jump on because it's like I want to play a couple. Yeah. Of rounds. If you lose, like ah, damn it. But you get in the next yeah. one. It's not a big deal, you know. It's ridiculous. It is. Man. It really doesn't make any sense. And especially too, like, cause like the best thing that the, the one of the the skills I learned from playing video games at a young age was like that sense of achievement. Of yeah. like striving so hard, dying so many times before you finally like unlock that character or beat that boss or whatever, and going, yes, I did that. Now you have businesses that are like, hey, you like that feeling? You can watch someone else do it for you. Yeah, it's, just, like, <laughs> it's like what the fuck? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Aren't yeah. there also like, and I could be completely wrong, but aren't there like businesses like uh, I think it might be like China or Korea, where for games like War, uh, like World of Warcraft and stuff, you can pay people to like mine gold for you. Oh, or absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely a play. Like it's like it's like uh, click farms except for your video games. Yeah. yeah. Where they can farm materials for you, and then you can use that in-game currency, or you know, use that to like finally build the armor that you've been trying to strive yeah, for for so yeah. long. But it's yeah, like, I think there's stuff like that for like World of Warcraft. It's it's always kind of been there. I think. Uh, that I, I'm not a I'm not though. a I'm not a Diablo guy, but I think there was something there with that as well. Yeah. Uh, well, those games are ripe for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And to me, that makes sense because that is just a time suck. Like, I could yeah. understand being like, "Hey, man, just, I'll pay you fifteen bucks. If you just put three hours and just fucking, you know, or whatever, however yeah. the, the cost of that is." But to, to pay someone to play the game for you and to get your character better, like, doesn't make any sense because when you go to play that character now at this rank or with these weapons against these people who are also yeah. supposedly at the same rank as you, you're still gonna suck. Yeah. Like, there's not any. There's not any point. I don't it know. It is the ultimate pay to win. Yeah, and it's, it's it, like we like you guys have been saying and how we've been talking about too. Like 2017 definitely is the, the overarching theme is 
these microtransactions yeah, or pay yeah. to play or games as a service, which is like really terrifying prospect yeah. to this industry that so we love. Stupid, it's a little crazy. I mean, going into that, like we have FIFA 18 with like the, the recent controversy as well. Like yeah. we already get EA is pulling, yeah, <laughs> pulling so we, some moves to say the least. We've yeah, talked really. to EA to death, but it's just like... But it, just, but it stands to, yeah. to reason though that there is a, like that there's a reason why we're talking about it so much yeah. is because that they are, in my eyes, making history. You know, whether it's bad or good, you know, Hitler also made history. I'm not, well, <laughs> oh my God. I'm, not, I'm not comparing EA to Hitler. I'm just saying. I heard that, you, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's an You extreme. heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory. No, no, no. It's, it, that's an extreme example. But I'm saying, like, even think, you know, bad decisions make history. And I think that's what EA is doing right now. Yeah. They're, they're making a, a lot of bad decisions that could potentially change the, uh, the face of, uh, of this industry for a long time to come. I don't right. think so. You don't well, think so? No, no, no. Well, no. Uh, let me rephrase that. They're making decisions that are affecting the industry right now, but at the same time, their stocks have gone down a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if these decisions will affect the overall gaming industry. Yeah, just I because sales sure. are not on their side. Well, I think that this, and I'll get to FIFA 18 and why that's relevant right now. But before we do, I think that it is, yeah, absolutely. And like what people are going to remember is like, remember the infamous time where the yeah. gamers spoke up and made EA change the Back mind. in my day. Yeah. Yeah. You we, just sent a letter and they <laughs> changed the loot crate system. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, FIFA 18, it, so they've, um, all right. A while ago, they introduced a game mode online called Ultimate Team which is essentially an online exclusive mode where you can basically, it's like, if I had to, you know, put it in less quick words, quick turns, like fantasy football, where you can uh, basically buy these packs or, or earn in-game credits through playing that mode to then get these loot crates, essentially yeah. is what it is. Yeah. These the player crates. packs that you end up, <laughs> you pay for the player pack with in-game currency that you can also purchase with real money and you will uh, open it up and you can possibly get like different players to then yeah, you're put on your roster. Yeah, really good players and you can build a super team. Exactly. And then there's like different tiers of those certain, like you can mm -hmm. get like a regular basic pack or like a better play, you know, like it has sure. supposedly a better percentage of yeah. you getting like those, those really uh, sought after. Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be dope. Oh my God. Oh my God. Quickly. We were talking about how EA should go into, or the Star Wars franchise for video games should go in a different direction. Uh, sports. I'm just saying that <laughs> would be Star Wars super soccer. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Mario did it with Strikers. Yeah, Could you imagine that shit with Jedi? Force the balls. <laughs> yeah. oh, this is a bunch of cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> no hands. No hands. Force lightning the entire I'm team. I'm not touching it. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways. So uh, FIFA 18 has these these packs, right? The thing is though that since you can purchase these with in-game currency, and considering how uh, competitive FIFA is, like. Everyone in the world plays this game. I think it's to not me. Well, <laughs> no. I don't consider you a person. No, I'm <laughs> That's wow. Wow. I'm just shame. Hitler You're is EA. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Just throwing it around so easily today. I felt so dumb as soon as I said that. I was like, well, all right. Um, well, no, since it is so competitive that people are willing to pay money for to get a better team because you know better players, you get you win a lot more. Obviously, right? Yeah. People are reportedly have been paying upwards of eight grand on these packs. Yeah. And the fucked up thing about it is that these are um, RNG packs, so like ran uh, random number, was it random number, I can't say it, randomly number generated. Jeez. Yeah, there it is. I need to slow down a bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, no, but they're uh, randomly number generated, these these boxes. So yep. no matter how much money you pay, a person who only maybe paid a dollar fifty could get messy just as much as the guy who paid eight thousand could get right. messy. Or the guy who paid eight thousand could potentially get nothing good. Yeah. And that a lot of people are reporting that exactly is that I'm paying this much money and nothing is coming out of it. Like I'm not really seeing any kind of like yeah. back or whatever. So that is the biggest controversy right now to the point where EA is already having controversy with their Battlefront two situation, like taking microtransaction away, but now they're putting in our sports games too. Like what is happening? It's just gonna, it's just, going everywhere, man. Yeah, dude, it's just pay to win. Yeah. Like that's the that's the infrastructure. Is just you want to get good? Well, don't practice. Just pay yeah. for it. You just right. you just pay eight grand for your cars, and you just have somebody else play the game for you. And you then pay another eight grand, and then really. you're like the best. Could you, yeah, you, yeah. Could you imagine <laughs> if someone if someone like went through that UK company and was like, here's battle, here's my Battlefront two like name. I need you to log in for me, get a bunch of credits. And then I'll also buy like a hundred dollars worth of loot boxes, and then just like unlock everything by paying literally everybody else to do it for them, and then they get back into it and they can just do whatever they want. 
It's the world I mean, we're yeah, going actually, to right now. Yeah, actually, for that now. game, when with the structure that it was before, it, you know, was pulled out, that would make sense. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, it wouldn't make sense. It's still. Well, it would make sense to do it, but yeah. Right, 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 right. It's I don't know. It's just it's ridiculous. And you know, it's like who do we blame here? Do we blame EA or the companies that are putting these microtransactions, or do you blame the people who are paying eight thousand well, dollars in microtransactions? Just, I think you can blame both. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things. That you got to speak with your wallet, and. You know, I I know Nathan was pulling up some numbers earlier about uh, Battlefront Two and it not right. It was you, right? No, yeah. it was me. It was, the, it was they're, you? they're sixty percent down. I mean, you two look so similar. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> it's true. I know we're interchangeable. Same accent and everything. We're both male. <laughs> <laughs> only... Guys, both have teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get. I just switch all. Your eyebrows both, are the same. You're both drinking tea earlier. It was confusing me. This is true. This is true. <laughs> That's actually how Americans blend in with the British uh, society. Yeah. You just take a drink cup of tea. tea. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like Assassin's Creed. You put on the hood, and you like walk yeah. around, and so you just drink a tea, and you're good to it's go. It's like, oh, sh- British guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Sorry. Jesus. Anyways, um, yeah, pl- basically sleeping with your wallet. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's like the, the fact that there's this, like, there's a market for that. that. People are willing to pay that much money, and, you know, that these games are, are trying to take advantage of that and incentivize it to a degree. But then even, like, you know, kind of go back on it and say, like, well... The more you pay, the better you might be able to get. But it's still random, so it's yeah. like, what is the point even there? So I don't know. It's it's just they're definitely making a lot of news, you know. Like and it's now I didn't realize that it was in the sports games until just recently. Mm-hmm. And but you're right, people are speaking up with their wallets. Battlefront Two is sixty percent or is selling six percent less than Battlefront One did. Yeah, that's and Battlefront One was terrible. You know, everyone had a backlash <laughs> there as well. And I and I saw you, like, the last episode. You guys were talking that they also took down their their pre order. Uh, or to well, be able you, to cancel people. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. cancel it. You'd have to call that's, them. That's yeah. So well, insane. I mean, you could still it's, cancel it. Just they have to do a lot more difficult yeah. way. It's like trying to cancel like a gym membership, you know? <laughs> oh my god, that that takes a whole day. Yeah. I've, I've been there. It sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's bad. LA Fitness, I have a fucking vendetta with you guys. Anyways, I was able to quit LA Fitness. Huh? I was able to get out of LA Fitness. Oh, did you have to kill somebody? That's what I had to do. Dude, I, cancel your card. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, just, well, yeah. just cut, change, I changed my name. I moved from Philly. Yeah. I'm originally from Australia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> that's a show right there. Right now. It's, uh, my secret origins. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 funny. But, like, we were mentioning earlier, too, like, you were talking about, like, you know, kind of like, we we're trying to discuss where the origin of loot crates kind of came from, and it's like kind of pay to play, these yeah, random yeah. kind of things. And you had mentioned uh, the comparison for Pokemon cards, and I thought that oh, that was really interesting. That yeah. how uh, you know we all used to like submit to that kind of, and it is a little bit, it is gambling. It is. It yeah. is yeah. super. It's gambling. ridiculous Pokemon. to not say it's not gambling, but it is. You're paying for something where you don't know what the odds are going to be. You don't know if you'll be successful. And it does give you that same of kind course. of like jolt of like oh, adrenaline. Yeah. You're like, oh my god, yeah, because I've you know when I, I I got the Overwatch loot boxes too during yeah. Halloween because I'm an idiot, and uh, and I was just like. Waiting to see what I got, you know. It's, yeah, it's when not you good. see the when yeah. you see the coin slip, if you see a gold one, you're like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, but like you know, we all used to do that when we were like you know younger with the Pokemon cards like that. Yeah. But it's kind of funny is that uh, the the Pokemon company itself just recently reported that they have sold 300 million copies over their six or 76 games in the last 21 years. Has it really been 76? 76. Well, okay, so it's including all of the actual like. You know, cult, the colors like red, blue, yeah, and green, yeah. all those. It's including all those and like Pokemon Snap and Pokemon yeah, Conquest, it still seems so Stadium, Rose, Stadium. Stadium. Like, exactly, I would have yeah. guessed maybe 50 games. 76. Or, it's not counting uh, Pokemon Go, though. At least it's unclear if it's counting it because it's a free to play oh, game. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, 300 million it's copies. Insane, man. Yeah. It's just Pokemon, dude. Yeah. They, they, that's why they've taken over. It's like it's just, they're just a Goliath, man. Yeah. It's, just, it's like, like it's, Disney has Mickey Mouse and then Japan has Pikachu. Yeah. yeah it's, oh my God! Yeah, that's exactly what they have. Yeah. Also, yeah. a big Mickey, Mickey Mouse is pretty big over there. Oh well, yeah. Well, no, Disney's but they're, it's they're like, yeah. yeah. But it's an American thing. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't, do not. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Don't get with they're your assumptions. They're both mouses, right? like yeah. you know. It's just, <laughs> Oh, mice, just, mice. Whatever. <laughs> he went to um, Philly school. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah school but no, doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it was fine too because we were trying to find uh, the numbers for um, other big franchises, and one that we were kind of trying to figure out was Mario. And I found I couldn't find an article that was recent, um, just because it was kind of short time. But I found an article back in 2010 where it was saying that out of the at the time, it was like over 200 games of the Mario yeah. franchise, including Mario Party, Mario Golf, Mario sure. Kart, the you know Super Mario Brothers. It had was it had broke in 2010. 240 million. So for for Pokemon Company to be only 21 years old and to only have 76 titles, yeah. 
to break yeah. three hundred million dollars is amazing. Yeah, like that's, that's that's incredible. I mean, that's Pokemon has what has kept Nintendo able to continue making handheld devices. Yeah, it's all Pokemon. Been the, this is true. Yeah, yeah. And see, and that's the thing too, because like. Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun were the last Pokemon games that released. They actually uh, sold $1.2 million or, <laughs> or, yeah, in Japan in the first three days. Yeah, yeah. people um, love them Pokemon games. <laughs> right, but the thing that's interesting is like what you just said is that, yes, Pokemon is what's um, keeping their handheld systems alive and keeps mm -hmm. them selling the new ones, absolutely. But that's the last one, at least as of right now. Yeah. It's going to be on a handheld system that's not the Switch. They're moving now to the Switch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like... As soon as they're like, hey, here's a new Pokemon game for the Switch, it's like, you know, 3D, it, or like a lot more 3D than, you know, the 3DS games mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, like bigger, better, more beautiful. I think the Switch is just going to be flying off yeah, shelves again. Skyrim. Oh like my God, just, absolutely. Yeah. Like I'm very fascinated. Like as soon as I, I hear that news, like I, I'm just going to be watching like stocks and everything super closely because I'm, yeah. I'm very interested how like much Nintendo's going to profit from that. And they, and they really are, because I mean, that was big news that they kind of dropped and teased about back in E3 for their uh, for the Nintendo Direct, or yeah. digital event, or whatever the hell it was called at the time. Um, when they were just like, the you know, the company's president of po or Pokemon Company was like, and we're uh, going to go to the Switch. I was like, <gasps> Yeah. Which is exactly <laughs> like, okay, why, just... short, this is exactly why shortly after Nintendo was like, by the way, our 3DS is going to be stopped in 2018. They're like, we're going to be done. Because it's just like, once Pokemon do leaves... You, like... Do you think that they're ever going to make another handheld device that's not the Switch? I mean, like, like do you think that they're going to continue this trend and just like focus mm. on one hybrid console as opposed to having so. their home console another that's mobile That's my guess. I wouldn't I be surprised so. if they do like a, you know, a 3DS you know, classic or whatever, that has a bunch of, like... Because there's good games on the DS and 3DS. Mm -hmm. And to have, like, a, you know... like there's, a, They actually... They, they took a lot of risks, too, on those on those consoles. Like, I mean, they... they You know, they had a, a Super Princess Peach game. I remember that. Yeah. They had uh, Yoshi Touch and Go. Well, you know, you can make those games for a lot cheaper. That sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, Yoshi is dirty. Yoshi's Touch and Go. She got, you know, brushes teeth after that game. <laughs> um... There, there was that, and there's like Mario Hoops three on three. That was a really interesting like mm -hmm. game as well. I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe it's just interesting that they're gonna like deviate from that route. I They've know. been in the hand like the the juggernaut for handheld gaming well, for it's, so it's long. Well, things yeah. are always splitting their market, so it's just like you know the 3DS sold really well, but the Wii U didn't sell. So you know how can they fix that? It's like well, instead of splitting all of your efforts, where it's like you know you have somebody working on Pokemon, you have somebody working on you know, Mario 3v3 hoops, you mm -hmm. know, you have somebody making a, a mainline Mario game. It's like, okay, where are all these things going to go? It's like, well, these have to go over here. These have to go over here. Okay, now we have to market this. We have to market mm -hmm. that. It's yeah. like... Funnel it all yeah, it's like one system. Stick it on one good, system. Yeah. That's yeah. why, like, when when they announced the Switch, I was like, yes, that's what I want. Like, just give me that. Because I'm not a big handheld gamer. Mm -hmm. I have all Nintendo's handhelds. Mm -hmm. And I and I play. And I don't play any of them. <laughs> well, I mean, I have select games I'll play. Like you know, sure. the the Mario Kart games are always great on them. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, Fire Emblem is just incredible. I never got into that that franchise into. Oh, so Fire good. Awesome, so dude. good, so good, so good. But it's one of those things. It's like I just I don't like being stuck on a handheld. But just the concept of a hybrid console, I'm like, yes, all day. Well, I mean, like, and, and you're not the only person to think that either. Like everyone is feeling the same way, me included. But uh. It's just, it's just, it's kind of weird to see that you know Nintendo is gonna put down that torch or you know funnel it into. They're not necessarily putting down the torch. It's gonna be still handheld. But yeah, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Just... Well, essentially, they're just not gonna make a tinier Nintendo because they're the one that they have. Is you could just, it is a portable device. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's so uh, it's as much a home console as it is a handheld system. It's true. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. And I mean that's you know Pokemon Company is not going anywhere anytime yeah, no, soon, like, especially yeah. with their three hundred million. I, I, that's that's truly a, a, a huge achievement yeah, I think for insane. a game that's that it's not that old. You know, it's only two centuries old. Two centuries. It's <laughs> it's two, two centuries Jesus. old. Back in wow. Egypt, <laughs> they used to <laughs> they, like that's what hieroglyphics they were on the wall. to the walls. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, before we move on to the next topic uh, <laughs> of these like AAA selling titles, I wanted to talk. We'll go into something else, but before we do. I wanted to see if you guys knew your Pokemon, uh, some little, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, people play it at Pokemon? bars, trivia, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. <laughs> bars, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Oh, um, okay, so I wanted to see if you guys knew your Pokemon uh, NPD sales number trivia. Oh, God. I want, Ooh. I have right here in front of me the top okay. five. Uh, huh? 
Nothing. Go I have the top five selling or top five games that are. Jesus, I can't say it right. <laughs> top five highest sold Pokemon games okay. in the like Ooh. for handheld. The original, huh? For handheld. For handheld, yes. Okay. And these are like the actual like you know, ruby, sapphire, gold, sure. silver, all that stuff. So I I'm gonna go. We can either start from one or five. What do you want to go for? You want to start from top to bottom or bottom to top? Let's go with five. All right, top five. Number, five. Number five. What generation? Is the uh, fifth highest selling, and then also if you want an extra point, you can give me the, the like an estimated amount. So I'm gonna say number five is. I'm gonna say so Pokemon yes. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With. Gosh, I don't even know. Maybe five million. Okay. <laughs> there's so many. Just there's, come on, there's man. There's so many. Uh, let's go with Pokemon. Wait, can it? Does it have to be? Because you, you know, like red and blue are the same, but and like yellow is different. No, no, no. Because oh. like red, they're, and... they're they are bunched together like that. Oh, they are. Except for like the the ones that like that came out that was a combination too. Like so, the red and blue had yellow. That's separate. Ruby and uh, right. sapphire had emerald. That's separate. Okay. Right, but those two are grouped. So they're gr- okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna say then. Uh, no, that I think that's way higher. We got five to this go, so tough. just you just kind of yeah. Slap okay, them. so fifth, let's just go with um, fire red, leaf green. Mm, okay. Do you want to guess an amount? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're both wrong. Black and white. Oh, I was which... think I was <laughs> black and white. Fifteen point six million dollars. You guys have got to up your your know, numbers right? here. Yeah, dude. It's so insane. there there's that's your point of reference. So we're only going okay. up from fifteen point six. So number four. I'm gonna go with black and white too. <laughs> Oh okay. my god, safe. Yeah, there is with, safe bet. Well actually I, I was named one too, by the way. Yeah, I, I was actually like I was thinking of like putting black and white two in, in this top five anyways. Because okay. I know it like it was doing really yeah. well. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with like 20, 20 million copies. Okay. Uh let uh, let's go with gold and silver. Both wrong. <gasps> Number four is Ruby and Sapphire, which is actually the very There's first so Pokemon many, that I like, like put hundred hours in. Sixteen point two million. That's the first advanced Jeez. one, correct? Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was so good. I love yeah. the third. See, generation. I, I stopped. I stopped <laughs> at the first generation. Favorites. I feel you. A lot of people did. Dude, no, you gotta at least go to gold and silver. Gold and silver. I started playing silver, so good. but I mm-hmm. I was playing it before it came out in the states. I was playing the Japanese version, and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Well, <laughs> play, an, play an American version, and you'll like it a lot. All I right, guarantee. number three. So last one was 16.2 million. We've already got Ruby, Sapphire, Black, and White out of the game. Yeah, let's, okay. How about, for 17.5 million, <laughs> I'm going to go with X and Y. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh, that's getting tricky now. That and I, don't, I hardly remember them after. Uh, Just start naming you know random what? colors. Just colors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Purple, blue, diamond. green, and pearl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm gonna say the same thing. Not to, you know. X and Y. Yeah. yeah, that sounds pretty. I think X and that y. sounds you, you pretty were, right. You were right, but wrong at the same time. Seventeen point six million. Ooh. Diamond and pearl, though. Oh, it was diamond and yeah, pearl. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> diamond and pearl. So X, X and Y was not number three. Number two. See, I think I know two and one. Okay. So. Like, I feel like X and Y needs to be up there. I feel like. Maybe, maybe not. I, I feel like number two is. Uh, Blue and uh, blue and red. Okay. And then I feel like number one is uh, uh, what's after that? What's what's one's I after? I mean, that? there's a bunch. No, yeah. no, no, oh, gold and silver. Gold and silver. I think they're number one. Yeah. Okay. I, th- I think. I think that's... Yeah. Just go ahead. Just say number two, number one right now. Might as well put your things. Yeah, sure. So he's saying blue and red. On number two, gold and silver is number that's, one. That sounds right. I still think X and Y should be up there though. All right. Well, give me. Give me. I'll say gold and silver number one, and X and Y. No, that doesn't make sense because red and blue. Fuck it. X and Y. Why not? Number one, number two. No, two, and then so gold, gold and silver. The... And, and... Number two, gold and silver, twenty three point <gasps> one million. Ah. Oh. Number one, of course, red, red blue. blue and green. I, of course. Thirty one point three million dollars. I could have swore though. I could have yeah. swore like it was red and blue, and then like the next generation because it, it was so big with uh, yeah, red and blue that you know yeah. the next generation. They, sure. They wow, I can't believe that they. Gold and silver had less numbers than red and blue. 
to me yeah, would I'm make any sense. By by like yeah, eight, by a lot. <laughs> yeah. By eight million. That, that's that's Anyways, so weird. So so there's that. I mean, I was I was a huge fan of the Pokemon series. To be honest with you, now as as it ages and it starts to go into like you know all these new. Yeah, well, these new modes and these the, new the things thing are, is, they're like, adding way too much yeah. and it's, yeah. just, it's convoluting the entire thing. when experience. it comes to like if, like making your Pokemon stronger there's way too many different aspects to it now instead of it's, just it, there's a lot of math instead of just battling like physics and gaining now. EXP <laughs> like, you gotta do a bunch of this like bullshit you nonsense breed, training you have to feed them <laughs> which you I'm sure them, you could and pay haircuts. somebody <laughs> is that what you said? yeah you can yeah when you give your Pokemon like when you groom them they get these like happy points or whatever, oh. which leads to stronger <laughs> bonds, which leads to yeah. other dumb stuff. This is so Nintendo. It's, yeah, if you groom your Pokemon, you get happy points, and then you kick the like, shit out of another thing with those so points. It's so convoluted. <laughs> like that's why Gold and Silver is so just yeah. beautiful. Like that yeah. game is, I love that. Game. I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But they're doing no, it right, no, no. and they're like they're they're still like you know giving fans what they want and giving them more and more and more and I still finding s- ways to innovate the like, I hope that franchise. doesn't end up in like and and Nintendo and uh and uh oh gosh it's not how uh, it's game not freak? how game freak yeah um uh you know they they obviously they, they've been good about it so far but like man if they ever went to like a pay to win thing where it's just like buy loot boxes with like three well, pokemon you know, I think Nintendo is weary I think if any yeah. if any of the companies know what's going on it's nintendo because they've been on like so close to failing so many different like different times and they've been like no fuck that we've learned from this and they're also like i feel like they're very the like the watchful eye of the video game industry like they know they're very cautious exactly yeah they don't want to tip the boat too much with stuff like that but i mean they're also not heavily involved in online infrastructure yeah they're just not yet we'll see what happens to switch right we'll see but still i don't think it's gonna (laughs) but still but still, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, so you know that's a AAA title that's been selling really well. You know, like getting, yeah, taking a lot of opportunities away from other indie developers. I can tell you that. You know, these these huge AAA, uh, you know, game publishers that are like bringing out like, you know, millions and millions of dollars into a game just to release it and to like make quick cash because they know they have the funds to do so with their ad campaign, all that stuff. And one game, uh, recently that is actually starting to break or trying to like trying to prove that wrong or make a name for itself. Uh, for the independent AAA titles, that's what they're kind of trying to deem it as, is Hellblade. And we're we're big fans of Hellblade. Yeah, dude, I love you know, that game so much. That game, believe it or not, came out three months ago. Feels like years, it's I know. so yeah. good. Because we all oh, aged with it as we like, <laughs> played it. so good. I, it, I wasn't the same after that game. That's why I feel so long ago. It's true, man. That three, game is three so months good. ago, I was a different person. That, well, recently, <laughs> uh, and we helped this happen. You know, um, 500,000. They broke 500,000 copies sold, nice. which is actually ha- helping them start to make a profit. Now, they're turning profit at $13 million of revenue. Um, and they had projected to hit this landmark six months um, after the release. They hit it half the time at three. So it's kind of like proving a point that AAA titles that are, you know, are, are saturating the market and, and really like, choking these other small independent developers like Ninja Theory, uh, they may may have a formidable uh, opponent. You know, like the, the fans definitely want these these independent titles, these, these single player experiences, these interesting experimental kind of uh, game games, just really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it really sold it. Like with, to, to give you kind of a guys, just a bit of a point of reference here, there were $75,000 or 75,000 copies pre-ordered before the game even released, which is news to me because none of us Heard yeah, of this game. I don't think like anybody of had heard of that. Like, there was like no marketing for it. I, I, that was like a word of mouth game for the most. Yeah, part. exactly. And then at then the first week, I guess that word of mouth worked because it sold two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. copies, which wow. is okay. half of what they are now. You know what they're at now. Not bad. Yeah, at, right from the get go. So to to do that, especially for a game that did not have very much. Uh, um, a lot, not a lot of uh, ad campaign for it. There was not no, no yeah no marketing no marketing. Thank you, and a very small core group of people that made. I think it was like something like twenty developers that made this game. Yeah, it wasn't uh, a big team. Yeah, they were able to make mm-hmm. a huge splash in the industry and to like to to really move a lot of people and to 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 make that much kind of a, an effect. Yeah. Um, it says a lot, you know. It says a lot for all these other independent de- developers, such as like um, uh, what's. Kojima Productions, you know, like I know that that's technically not a small, but they are. Well, no, independent, I mean, yeah. yeah, they're they're independent. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're being funded by Sony, but it's something where it's just like, no, we're independent. We're gonna do our own thing, mm-hmm. 
and they want to get into this like triple A indie scene. Mm-hmm. Like that's really what they are, you know, Kojima and and his team are kind of striving for. Mm-hmm. And you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, people are kind of taking notice of what like Ninja Theory did. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see more of that kind of stuff. And and honestly, some of the best games to come out in the last few years have all been from like indie studios. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of these games are like winning Game of the Year, like The Witness. Uh, was a, a big one like last year yeah and then obviously it's like cuphead you know it's like a 2d side scrolling game but that game is phenomenal and it's uh and a totally different kind of game than this but sure. it's like they spent years on that like that was like a four-year game in the making mm-hmm. yeah uh, and they just poured so much time and effort into it just like you would a big like triple a game mm-hmm. Uh, but it's. I think I think it stands to, to reason to probably define what exactly a triple A game means. Um, for some people who are watching that don't really understand, like what the difference between a triple A game is, an indie game and a triple A indie, indie game. Triple A. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's because for for the longest time there was no really middle ground. Uh, the way that the industry kind of happened with the the influx of multiplayer online um, play and with digital uh, uh, digital releases of games, they kind of basically choked the market and it it had broke off into two black and white pretty much ends of the spectrum where you had your triple a titles mm-hmm. which are your games that were like super expansive these huge studios putting it together and they looked like you know like naughty dog is a is a triple a yeah, publisher yeah. with their uncharted series you know you have bethesda with all their things there's a a, a very clear-cut polish all the games the, the graphics are usually really great yeah. and there's a lot of work in the writing and everything like that then you have the other end of the spectrum which is your indie games which are Maybe graphically not that impressive, but It'd be like uh, two dudes in a basement. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 these people who are like basically have no resources making a video game out of nothing. Like you know, and these are usually like your side scrollers or your your randomly generated uh, procedural games. You know, it could it could be a, a whole plethora of anything, right? Yeah. But now there's this middle ground that's started to be kind of introduced. That's called the independent AAA game, which is basically these same studios, these like these people who are making you know without very many resources, like small teams, small independent uh, studios that are making these games to look like a AAA title with with those graphical, um, uh, you know, the, the graphical, uh, whatever, power like of those Unreal other games. Engine. Of, yeah, yeah, those engines yeah. Of, of, of great writing, of substantial gameplay that's not just, uh, you know, like a 2D side scroll or something like that, right. but still made on a very frugal budget. And so I think that it's really important for the industry to have these three tiers because it gives, I think, more leeway for experimentation, and it also gives uh, it's it sets bars. You know, like if this developer can make a game that impressive for this amount of money, because they focused on either a certain gameplay me- me- mechanic like the, like her psychosis, yeah. or if it focused on story and telling a really riveting story, then it sets the bar for a lot of other companies. Like, well, shit, they made it for that much, and we put. 200 million into Battlefront 2 and everyone hates it. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I think it's really impressive that that studio Ninja Theory did that. Yeah. And I think that it's, it kind of, it throws a lot of hope into the mix of the industry as well. For yeah. Sure. And, yeah. And, and again, like with technology advancing as much as it is, it becomes easier to make games that look really well polished and really nice. So we're coming to an age where, you know, the same thing with like making movies has become a lot easier for people. Sure. Because it's so, the technology is so available for everyone. And so, you know, as people, you know, as the next generation grows up with computers and they're they're growing in the digital age, you know, they probably have a bunch of kids who, like, learn coding, like, so much easier. And so we'll probably get even better indie games within the next 10, 15 years just because, you know, kids are growing up with it. Mm-hmm. Technology is becoming easier for people to learn. Um, so you'll probably have more games like Hellblade or at least more games that look like, you know, that AAA polished, you know, Unreal yeah. Engine kind of style. So... It's. I think it's. A, it seems like a bright future, unless mm-hmm. there's some sort of corporate greed that happens where they're bottlenecking the industry. Does, yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I think that. Uh, I think that they gave. There wasn't that much here because they're like, well, we're not advertising it right. too hard, so you know. But at the same time, we... when you have platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or Indiegogo, you mm-hmm. know, like shit like that, where people are like, Patreon. yeah, Patreon. <laughs> you can just get public <laughs> uh, Patreon. <laughs> Uh, but like publicly, you know, funded, you know, so people can just make a game like, uh, well, what's his name? Um, missing. No. Well, yeah, mi- well, missing. But I, I was thinking of this is a bad example because it wasn't that good of a game. Ukulele. No. Um, yeah. uh, the Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It, um, what's his name? Inafune. Yeah. That Inafune. KG KG Inafune. Yeah, he just went on Kickstarter. I was like, 
I'm going to make this game yeah. without Capcom. Capcom you guys want it? hates Mega Man yeah. for some reason. I don't know what Mega Man did to Capcom. Yeah, exactly. Slept with Capcom's mother. <laughs> yeah. They absolutely this is Capcom. They hate Mega Man. Yeah. They just hate it him. It makes no <laughs> sense why, but yeah, they hate Mega Man. So Inafune's like, hey, you guys want me to make a Mega Man game without Cap Capcom like throttling me to do stuff? Then I'll do it. And they're like, yes, for the love of God, yeah. please just take my money. And, make you know, it. the end result wasn't what we expected or you know what we necessarily wanted sure. but it's proof that like you know with this especially because the overwhelming you know impact of the internet where like we can just look at anything anywhere anytime and information so easy to get you know it makes it seems a lot easier for like oh well these guys on patreon are want to make a game so let me support them or mm -hmm. these guys on kickstarter want to make a really cool looking game so i'll support them so it becomes a lot easier to make games and so it just seems like the future for indie gaming I think is bright yeah. just because yeah. of that. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of funny too because uh, you, you said something that uh, kind of made a point really clear to me was that I feel like now more than ever gamers have a voice that is actually being heard and they have a, a, a true means to affect um, the industry in, in certain sure. ways. I mean, we have with, with what you guys talked about last week about uh, people speaking out and going on Metacritic and giving Battlefront 2 a, a <laughs> point, point two. four. Yeah, point two. <laughs> point eight. Oh, point, point eight. eight. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's be yeah. let's be clear. Point eight. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, in like in causing EA to rethink their whole microtransaction thing, and then even like you know, uh, players giving the literal opportunity or the opportunity literally to these uh, developers to make a game that they they want to make, you yeah. know, on their own terms. Mm -hmm. Whether it's my number nine or whether it's uh, with Missing or uh, Ukulele, which was everyone was like hoping that'd be the next Banjo Kazooie. Kind yeah, of thing. exactly. But we we truly do have a voice now, and yeah. uh, and it matters. It's not just we're not we we're not only are we speaking with our wallets, we're also speaking with our concerns and. Yeah. And All that's, stuff too. yeah, and that's also like another example of that is when people went on Twitter and they were going to Disney and be like, hey, you're promoting gambling with these loot boxes in Star Wars. They are. No, I know. No, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, are. Not, I'm not trying to prove like no, whether I know, that's I know, right I know. Not, But like, that's just another example of like, you know, we have a voice, especially because of the internet. It's like, oh, I'll just go on Twitter and complain right to this company directly. Yeah. And if a thousand other people are doing it, so like hashtag Disney sucks or something, you yeah. know, then that's why you get the CEO of Disney talking to the CEO of EA saying, mm -hmm. what's going on? Like, Well, I, I fa actually, I failed to mention it back when we were talking about the FIFA thing, that there's actually a campaign right now on change.org, which is a yeah. petition website. There's so, almost yeah. 25,000. 25,000 people have signed a petition uh, with the campaign of hashtag fix FIFA. Yeah, it's all over I Reddit, mean, too. It's like people are, like, the way the social media movement has kind of happened, it's like, it's... Yeah, it gives a voice. I mean, change, that yeah. is the ultimate customer service line nowadays mm -hmm. is you know these petitions or twitter or you know all the so all the social media because you can directly complain to a company and yeah. everyone can see it yeah, yeah absolutely yep. i don't know i i kind of after seeing this uh, this this news about hellblade it kind of makes me want to play it again this oh, like dude, to, I, like it's a good game. buy a whole it's new so copy good. just to help them get <laughs> yeah, more funding to yeah, make another one honestly, yeah. oh my god that game is so, so good so here's it's... 500,001 please make it <laughs> yeah, 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 do yeah. it again <laughs> it's, we mean it yeah. you know? I'm, I'm excited to see what they do next like i uh, yeah, man. it's going to be yeah. hard to top that is going to be a difficult that they've set the bar so yeah. high but, but you know, that's it's, okay cuz i mean but now they have like they they can go to like an investor or something because you know it's like, at the end of the day it's like you know it's all about money you know it's a business and sure. it's like now it's like look we've we've turned a profit this is possible so what can we do now to like up the ante get a little funding through x y and z like there's stuff that they can do now it's not like untested water didn't sure. didn't uh, hellblade didn't like some of the proceeds also go to like charities yeah. involving yeah, yeah mm -hmm. mental health yeah so like that's just another thing to be like, hey, a good PR for your company. If you want to help us out, make another game like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we can put some charity. You know, we'll direct some of the funds to charity, and then you get awesome PR just because. It's just when you have less resources to work with, you're forced to really focus and hone in on what you're trying to say or what you're trying to do, and right. get yeah. the best possible with what little you have. Yeah, and and they I, they did that. You know, like the yeah. way that they did their sound design with that game, and and um, I don't remember what it was called, but like the 360 binaural. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the effects with their headphones and like the way they use the yeah. voices, the, the research that went to um, making sure that they articulate and, and uh, convey that psychosis accurately yeah. and as, as cautiously and carefully as they could. Um, it's, it's, it's really amazing. You know, like it really, yeah. it, it shows a lot what, yeah. what people can learn from video games, yeah. um, you know, and, and also what people can do with video games. And, uh, and the it's just nice to see that kind of detail yeah, and, and like, taken care of. The the price of that game alone is worth 
worth it just for like the mini documentary for how they made the game, like mm. the whole process. Yeah, oh, it's like it's amazing. so it's cool. Amazing. Like just watching it all happen and like just you know to see the setups they had and yeah. like what people like you had like. The voices in your head, you had three people on a microphone just talking at the same and time. And they would like walk yeah. around yeah. it and they would like kind of come so in and cool. scream. It was and, like, amazing, yeah. See, yeah. It's very interesting. Stuff oh my God. like that in games, I miss so much. Like it doesn't happen anymore. Like one of my favorite memories uh, from the first God of War game, uh, you can, uh, there's a ton of stuff to unlock in that game without paying anything. And so one <laughs> of the, the best part of the game. Yeah, no, but like one of the best <laughs> things you can unlock in that game is like you can get like those mini documentaries about how the game was made where they do interviews with, you know, the people from, I think it's Santa Monica Studios, mm -hmm. where they're just interviewing the developers. You get to see, like, behind the scenes how they made it, like, the artwork that went behind it. And it's just, it's really cool, like, watching how the sausage is made kind of thing. And it's just, it's super interesting. If you're it's interested. a disgusting phrase. I mean, it's a pretty common <laughs> phrase to watch how the sausage is made. Ugh. I mean, you yeah, never want to see what's put in the casing. It's usually just... Well, lips yeah, but and that, assholes. All right, well, <laughs> just ground lips and assholes. Like that's yeah. what I'm eating. <laughs> for this, they just take like a uh, like a game designer and a voice actor, and they just put them. They into grind them up. Just grind them. And into there's them. your disc. <laughs> yeah. But, um, like, but those, that's but how those, games are made. <laughs> but those like mini it's movies, disgusting. mini documentaries, and God of War had a bunch of them. Like it wasn't just one or two. They had like ten. Yeah, and I so, remember like, Halo Two also released with the collector's edition that yeah. had a DVD of how it was made. And yeah, it was. Was fun. <laughs> RE4 like, had a good one too. Yeah, but like those kind of things where you can watch those behind the scenes with the devs, like yeah. that's the best thing about those games. And like you didn't have to pay a dime for it. You it's just true. had to unlock them, and which was awesome. And so when you beat Hellblade, you get to see that, and it's just it's so cool watching how that game was made. It's it's phenomenal. That's a great game. Yeah. I, I can't wait to play again. You know, speaking of great games, uh, Zach, you had. You had a game that you were itching to talk about here recently, too. Because yes. we had, yes. we, you guys talked about the October 27th uh, debacle with all the huge games that come out. Well, we call that a debacle. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, a, the atrocity of the October 27th. Yeah. That was a great it's game. something that happened. That a, <laughs> yeah, that was a great day for gaming. I wouldn't yeah. really call it a debacle. <laughs> well, you had you had your shitty shit, which was Assassin's Creed Origins. God. No, I will, I will vehemently opinion, or be opinionated about that game. Fuck that game. We're not gonna talk about it, but fuck that game, um, and that franchise, really. But no, it was yeah, it was that good. game. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey came out. It obviously blew everyone out of the water. It still wasn't like the, out of the top twenty. It was number three, still ranked for Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey. Well, was. it so there's a there's a weird thing with, with that, and we talked about it on last week's episode. Uh, so on the MPD charts, it's ranked as the third, but. Um, in our hearts, Nintendo, it's <laughs> well, Nintendo's was basically like that doesn't include our digital sales. With our digital sales, we're actually number one in that. Oh, uh, okay. So well, then, nice. well, because well, we also saw in, in the recent um, in a recent release of new numbers yeah. that Wolfenstein 2, which was also released on the same day, uh, got 14th. So maybe yeah. that doesn't include digital sales as well? It, yeah, MPD's weird. Some games it does, some games it doesn't. They just they can't really keep up with the time. Oh, so, it doesn't sound like know. it's a very uh, legitimate source. It's, <laughs> it's the best thing. It's like, eh. It's, just, it's, it's there. <laughs> unless, it's a company, unless a company just straight up releases their numbers, which sometimes they do. Sure. Uh, typically, if they're really good. If they're bad, they don't say anything. But, no, of course it's uh, credible. It's cre yeah. Of course it's credible. But what we want to talk about, what I want to kind of open the floor up to this, is because you, you have not shut the fuck up about yeah, it. Wolfenstein too. So, so I kind of want to give you that, that Yeah, it was, one of the, it was one of those things I really wanted to get Wolfenstein on the day it came out, but Mario came out the same day, and I got to go with the with the mustache with the, man, With you uh, know? Origins, that's what you went with, right? With of course. Assassin's Origins? Yeah, so yeah, I went with Assassin's Origins. Creed, yeah. I looked at it, I threw it out the window, <laughs> and then I got the... <laughs> yeah. I was like, nobody wants to play that. Yeah. <laughs> God, I took my Assassin's Creed, I put it in the trash, yeah. and then I bought Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so you bought Mario, yeah, and... So I uh, bought Mar Mario... Finally beat it. Amazing. Love yeah. it. Great. So I finally picked up Wolfenstein 2. It was like 30 bucks on Black Friday. I was like, yeah, I'm finally going to do that. <laughs> so, uh, which actually, I'm going to tell a really funny story with that. Just real quick. Just real quick. You have time. Do I? <laughs> Not much, I? but you have time. And you're done. So, <laughs> so, you know, I was deciding where I wanted to pick it up. It was already sold out on, uh, on uh, Amazon. 
because I was like, oh, I'll just do like a next day thing, but it was already gone. Sure. And I, I didn't want to get a digital copy so I could share it with you guys. So it's like if, if one Thanks. of you guys want to play. Yeah, it's nice. Despite PSN having a great deal on that and the DLC for like 40 bucks. We get right? it. We're thankful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but anyway, so Jeez. I was like, so where do I want to pick this up? It's like I could order it from like GameStop or Best Buy, but I'm going to have to stay in line all day. Yeah. It's I don't want to do that. It's like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy this from Toys R Us. So... Uh, I went to Toys R Us, it was 30 bucks, and I was like, okay, so I ordered that online, and I was like, I was driving to the store, and I'm talking to my mom on the phone, and she's like, so what are you doing, uh, to, you know, this is Thanksgiving, and yeah. I was like, I'm not doing anything, <laughs> I got no Toys friends, R Us I kid. <laughs> so I'm like driving, I'm driving Taking to Toys R Us, <laughs> at, uh, it opened at 5 p.m., and I was like, I'm not going to go there at 5 p.m., I'll just go there about 5.30, 6 o'clock, so... It was like six o'clocks coming up, and I'm like driving, and my mom's like, "So, you know, what are you doing?" I was like, "Oh, I'm just driving up to Toys R Us to pick up a game I pre-ordered online." And she's like, "Oh man, you're gonna probably gonna you're probably gonna be in there for like hours." And I was like, "It's Toys R Us. Nobody's going to Toys R Us." And she's like, "I don't know. It's Black Friday." I was like, "All right, we'll see." So I roll up to Toys R Us. And there's like a Target right there, a Best Buy, a Walmart. It's on like one shopping center. I mean, this parking lot is just nuts. Yeah. Like 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving, not even Black floor, Friday yet. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's crazy. Toys R Us, it's like a ghost town. <laughs> I, I walk into Toys R Us. There's like a couple people in a line, but then there's like just customer service. I just walk right up to the counter. It's like, hey, I bought a game online. She's like. Oh yeah, here you go. It just like gave it to me. It walked out. I was tell, out. Tell your friends. I was out like. Well, I think they're going out of business. Oh, well, yeah. they went. They they, yeah. they declared bankruptcy, but they're, Again. they're getting pulled out. From yeah. The same. So I just thought that was a funny story. I wanted to tell. I was in and out of there less than a minute. Like it was the, Wow. I was just like, yep, Black Friday. <laughs> Best Black Black Friday experience yeah. of my life. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's great. there's a there's a spectrum of like how long you wait somewhere, and you have on one end the DMV, and then the other end Toys for Us on Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like wow. So so anyways. Um, so this game is fantastic. So I, I, I don't believe you. It, it's true. It's okay. True. Well, it's true. Me. <laughs> I've shown you some stuff. You did. You did. You did show me some stuff. It, it, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let you yeah. finish your stuff. So anyway, so yeah, obviously I've played the first one, and you should play the first one if you're gonna play this game because it, it happens. You know, story picks up right mm -hmm. where the. Last well, it's one. a very it's a very story heavy game. If, yeah, if that's very okay. story heavy yeah. game. Uh, so. You know, the first game in the series, like, I went in, like, oh, it's probably just some dumb sh shooter. You're, you're playing some beefy, meathead, you know, white guy American just, like, killing Nazis. And that game just ended up being so much more. It's just, like, the 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 main character, BJ Blazkowicz, and, like, the, the whole supporting cast, it's just, like, the, the characters... Are so strong. G and give us a little bit of a quick synopsis of what the game is, because there might be okay, people who so, don't know yeah, what so, is. So Wolfenstein, it's been around forever. You should know. But anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, so like with uh, with the last Wolfenstein game, um, you know, it's basically a, a new series made by Machine Games. So it's mm -hmm. like takes place Published in 1960, and uh, you know, basically it's an alternate reality where the Nazis win uh, the war, World mm -hmm. War Two. Mm -hmm. And and so it just kind of it takes place in uh, in 1960 with your character trying to like fight back against the Nazis essentially and, with and with with a German basically overtake of the U.S. Yeah. Of so the, world. the first game takes of place world, yeah. in Europe. The uh, this game takes place in America. Okay. So um, 20 years after, or like 15 years after the first game. No, so the first game is in 1960. This game takes oh, place in 1961. Copy, copy. Okay, anyways. Yeah. So, Wolfenstein so, 2. Now yeah, you're... So, so anyway, so... I mean, it's, like, this this game... Like, man, Bethesda's just been killing it. Like, it's... Like, I'm, I'm just so happy that there's just still... There's single player, just no loot boxes, no online. Just, yeah. like, give me a, a single player campaign with just, like, characters that are, like, likable, lovable, relatable... You know every a bull word. <laughs> All the bulls. <laughs> All the bulls. Uh, <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Tangible. Istanbul. <laughs> Istanbul. <laughs> a bull. Just a bull. Just a bull. A bull. A bull. No, just a bull. All right, we're just going. Down, we're going down a terrible, terrible. This will never end. Now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. Continue. <laughs> a dog bull. <laughs> Oh, so a lot of good characters. Good times with <laughs> characters. Character. Yeah. So yeah, so it's like so the um shut up cat talking <laughs> yeah. over here. Yeah. So, you know, this game it's like 
yeah, the uh, the shooting feels really good. You know, the guns feel really good. Killing Nazis feel really good. As it should. But, yeah, yeah. As it should. <laughs> of course. But it's just, it's one of those things, like, this this game, and we were even talking about, like, like uh, 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 Mad Max earlier, mm-hmm. the, the new one. It's just, like, that movie doesn't deserve to be as good as it is. Because it's, like, it should just be a dumb action movie, with people driving around in trucks. But it's, like, those characters are just awesome. They're, like... All the abuls, you know, <laughs> and and this game's kind of like that. Dude, where that don't shut up, <laughs> shake your fist. Don't. And this game's like amazing. that. Where it's just like, dude, this this game doesn't deserve to be as good as it is in like the best way possible, you know. Mm. Where it's just like these characterable, you know, the, like the, these characterable, these characterables, <laughs> the, the abuls, you know, lunchable, <laughs> touchable, the untouchable. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go down a path. Um, but yeah, it's just like, man, the 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 first and the second game really like the the story is so good. Yeah. And the like if if uh, if there's people out there like if you if you like Dishonored, you'd probably like this game because it's like it's it's like this weird alternate history. There's uh, there's just so much like lore in there that it's just soaked and saturated in its own like history and, and what's going on like you can just walk around like I've, I've put like 25 hours into that game probably five hours of that is just me walking around looking for like newspapers and like pictures and like postcards so, so the world like feels that. lived in and you, uh, yeah and you there's really just so much to it. okay yeah that's that's really awesome and it's like, that's always good but this is just really good at that yeah. yeah and it's like there's there's like records you can find with like and i played you some of them uh of like just like weird alternate history beetles and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that. It's like the and beetles like were controlled by yeah. Nazis and had to use propaganda German yeah. science. Yeah. And just like, it is really interesting that all that world building they put into the game and that alone actually makes me want to play it uh, yeah. along with like the way that the trailer that you showed us um, has that like really fun tone about it that's like it knows what it is yeah. and it's not taking it's, itself too seriously. It's the thing, like this game it, it rides such a uh, uh, this like delicate line of like so look, delicate. it's so delicate. We're in this messed up world where, like, Germany has taken over like seventy five percent of the world. They have, they have, like, they have murdered so many people at mm-hmm. this point in time. Mm-hmm. Like nineteen sixties, it's just like all the Jews are gone. It's like the Americas. They have like New Orleans has been turned into like there's death camps everywhere, and New Orleans Jeez. has been like they've built this huge wall around it, and they've just put people in there that are like. Uh, the uh, the lesser people, you know, sure. and it's it's a messed up world, mm-hmm. but within this messed it's up like world, like a paternal holocaust, essentially. Yeah, paternal, that... eternal, <laughs> eternal, <laughs> eternal. It's holocaust. a weird word to put in front of holocaust. <laughs> the old maternal holocaust. I said paternal, which yeah, is that's even weirder. Yeah, paternal. <laughs> yeah, it's a fraternal holocaust. Guys, I can't do two of these. Likeable. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyways. Um, Eternal Holocaust. So, but it, so <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's this messed up, screwed up world. But on top of that, you have like these likable, lovable characters that yeah. are like, there's like well, there's these important. scenes. There's these scenes of just these characters like having these moments with one, uh, one another that are like, uh, I, I don't want to give anything away because when those scenes happen, you're like, it's like these these characters are so, like they're just. Well, they're you you so showed good. us the cutscene and like and from that cutscene of of uh, oh the cat, God. screaming. Oh, we got people doing things. The door just opened. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God, come <laughs> things on. Are, things are going on. A wire. Come on in. Um. Hi. Hey. Live here. <laughs> so. Uh, so anyway, so uh, we're we're almost done. Shop cat. <laughs> so, cat. So yeah, it seems it seems like a it seems like a game that that it does have a lot to tell in its narrative. It's you know yeah. it's it's it knows it's narrative driven. It's not taking itself too seriously, but those scenes are done very well. To, yeah. And like it's it's I don't know. It was great writing from the, yeah. the shot it's, that you showed me. Really the acting was really writing. amazing Cause, too. Because it, it's like there's and there's there's moments in this game in this messed up world that I've I laughed out loud because it's like these mm-hmm. like funny jokes that just they hit perfectly at the right times right in between you know uh genocide and murdering nazis no oh, that's, that's there's comedy just, comes in threes but it's yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> and then paternal uh holocaust <laughs> sorry but yeah, it's, it's just this like they they ride such a, a, a delicate line and they just nail it every single yeah. time and it's also like 
I, I don't want to get too into like politics and stuff like current events. That was actually but, bring it up. So, but it's feel free. You know, I, just to touch on a little bit, a little bit. Bethesda's they've been a little like, yeah, no, you know, we're not trying to say anything about what's going on right now. But this game says so much about what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's so uh, relevant to everything. Well, in and their ad like, campaign for one of the trailers, I think it said uh, uh, make, like the Nazis' like slogan was like make America great again or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so and, they were and doing And a lot of the alt-right like people and people who are, you know, uh, right, really right-wing like took offense and went on Twitter and started blasting against Bethesda and Bethesda was just like, you're killing Nazis. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, why just, is anybody complaining? You yeah, know, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. And they just like, like went really hard into that. Like, no, okay, well, yeah. we're doubling down. You know, they just like kept going. It's like, yeah, it's they were having awesome. fun with the campaign, yeah. but they were also like, we're not trying to say anything about what's going on right now. They were they're trying to make that very clear, <laughs> but it's like, I think this game is so relevant to right now. Like literally, the KKK is really uh, they're. they're they have a fairly how, how prevalent in that game. Yeah, they they yeah. have a fairly decent sized role in this game, and it, you know, and it's one of the, like this game is obviously there's a lot to do about race mm-hmm. and you know people just thinking they're just superior to other types of people, and just which, not, Nazis being Nazis. Nazi, wait, wait, and, and are just, Nazis known for racism? <laughs> just a wee bit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought they were known for their nice mustache. <laughs> 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 That's how I know. And they're marching, which is really great. Always in sync. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So it's just like that mixed with things like you know they don't they don't use the words, but they obviously it's like the you know Nazis take over America, so it's like they take over like things like the news and and journalism, mm. and you know they 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 try and they choke out everything that like is you know fake news to them sure. that would be talking against them kind of you thing. Do, you and do, you some, don't say it. There's just like... <laughs> okay. There's, there's like little things like that. Like you can really like just look at this game and, and just see how it relates to like things yeah. that are going on. Between you, just shallow-minded, just racist people, just like... I, I, I don't know what people are thinking nowadays. But it's just like... Dude, if, if these like these messed up people had it their way nowadays, we'd have this crazy messed up yeah. world. It's just like... And now it's a game. Uh, yeah. And now Play it's a game. 60 you, bucks. You, you, uh, <laughs> you get to experience what bucks hell it looks this like. Weekend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you let me borrow uh, Wolfenstein 1, and I, I, you know, it was right after you let me borrow Doom. So, like, I was coming off of the perfect FPS yeah. <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to Wolfenstein, which had some mechanics that I didn't really enjoy. But I feel like the way you've been talking about uh, Wolfenstein 2 and, and what you showed me and, and some of the issues that I had with the first game, you said they actually kind of fixed. Yeah. So, I think I'm going to have to borrow it when yeah. you're done. After you've yeah, you put another 25 hours into it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm going to. I Because it's also like, it has a lot of replayability. Because it's, there's alternate um, timelines depending on like certain actions. So it's like you play through the game and then you can play through it again. And there's like different characters, different oh, guns. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, d- and you obviously you can approach things in different ways where it's like you can do something really stealthy or just go in guns blazing, dual wielding, just mow down everything. Yeah, like lasers and yeah, <laughs> lasers. Yeah, and tases, 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 all kinds of tases. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, yeah, I call dibs on that when he's done. Sorry, I mean, I'm borrowing the first one, so that's perfect. Yeah, fine. so Gosh, yeah, yeah play through. And I, I will say, like first hour of the first game, it's the weakest part of the whole series. Get through that, it gets. I mean, it just. Infinitely it will blow better. your mind. Yeah, I mean, it just, yeah. Infinity Holocaust. That's actually Call of Duty's next game after World War II. That's pretty messed up. It is. That's Activision's doing weird things, guys. Anyways, I'm just saying, uh, write to your you know local governor <laughs> to get EA and Activision out of our video games. Guys, thank you so much for watching this. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. What a weird episode. We're just talking about Hitler and, and yeah, everything. Well, well, one of us is talking about Hitler. And Two relating. of us. You. What are we talking about? A lot, a lot. Someone relates. I didn't. Re- I didn't mean to. All right. <laughs> okay. It was a slip of the tongue. It was a. It was a. Freudian, Freudian slip. Well, Sorry. For, wrap up the show. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you uh, dealing with them for the week uh, last week. But I am back, so it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get through this together. And uh, if you ever sit in this chair again. I was, <laughs> it's my chair. I, own it. I bought kidding. that chair at Office Max. No. <laughs> Just yesterday. Um, no, but uh, yeah, it's been good. Thank you guys for checking it out. I want to go ahead and let you know that we do have all the things we talked about on our Twitter and uh, some behind the scenes stuff as well on our Instagram at Go Multiplayer. You can also follow us on our personal pages, which mine on Twitter is at Mastorado and Instagram is at Guillermo underscore Dorado. You have Zach here at where? I'm- 
at Hitler. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. Nate <laughs> 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 just broke him. Nate is just like, <laughs> my God. Uh, yeah. We both like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm at Zach Matt Scan. It's Z-A-C-K-M-A-T-Z-G-A-N-I-S. And you can check out right now on Twitter. I literally have pictures I posted of piles of Nazis I murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legit. I'm legit. I'm legit. Man, awesome. I, I, miss, I was going to say I missed the jingle, but I don't know if I missed it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Javier, where can they find you? Uh, so I'm on Twitter at MultiplayerHav, and I recently created my own personal Reddit. Oh. Ooh, which is also at Multiplayer Hub. Hey. Nice. So there you go. We you can cover all spectrums. <laughs> you can also follow uh, Nath over here, who's I think hopefully will still be with us next week <laughs> after today, um, at Multiplayer Nath on Twitter. And you can also follow Mick, who you guys finally got to meet last week. Yeah, it was so nice having him on. Yeah, yeah, it was super nice. Exciting. You got to meet him, and uh, you can also follow him at Mick to the Wood on both Instagram and Twitter. And of course, we like to give a special thank you to DJ Cutman for you know all the great music that he supplies to the show. It really kicks it in high gear right from the get go. And again, yeah, guys, awesome. we do have a Patreon page. Please check that out. We always appreciate you and your patronage. <laughs> and like, subscribe, share with your friends. Like, we, yeah. we need to get this out there. Share yeah. with your mom, your dad. Your dog. Your I don't dog, care. I'm picky. Your cat. <laughs> Any species is welcome, really. Yeah, really. We're inclusive. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. So why don't you go ahead and keep on grinding, and we'll see you next week at the Respawn. Later. We love you, and we hate Hitler. Yes. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Multiplayer, Mario would like to send a special thank you to Jaden Lawrence, Arturo Mendera, Merchadan Kroll Pitaru, and Mario Dorado. Thank you so much for watching. Woo.